morning student in my last class i have mentioned about the glycolytic pathway now in that pathway i have mentioned that how glucose is converted to pyruvic acid and that process i have already mentioned that that process mainly takes place in the cytoplasmic fluid of the cell and i have also also mentioned that one molecule of glucose is producing two molecules of pyruvic acid and pyruvate is the end product of the glycolytic pathway now if we see this picture then we can find that this is the glycolytic pathway and pyruvate is the end product now this particular reactions are taking place in the cytoplasmic fluid of the cell and now this is the end product now this product is to be utilized in very many purposes now under anaerobic condition this pyruvate may get converted to ethanol and carbon dioxide it may convert it to lactate and this pyruvic acid when it further going for this respiratory chain and entering to the respiratory chain from the cytoplasmic fluid that it is converted to acetyl coa and this acetyl coa is being utilized for respiratory process and for this conversion of pyruvate to acetyl coa a molecule of carbon dioxide is being released now when it is entering to the respiratory chain it is this particular process is taking place in the mitochondria of the cell now it has to be transported from cytoplasm to this mitochondria and the first product being six carbon compound citric acid this particular cycle is otherwise known as citric acid cycle or the tricarboxylic acid cycle and as this particular uh, this uh, cycle has been uh, discovered by the scientist Krebe this particular cycle is also known as Krebe cycle now whatever may be the name whether it is citric, citric acid cycle or TCA cycle or Krebe cycle it matters that that end product of glycolytic process that is the pyruvic acid is converted to acetyl coa and then this acetyl coa is participating in this particular reaction now this acetate in the form of acetyl coa is derived from pyruvic acid and other metabolites and is oxidized to carbon dioxide in the citric acid cycle now the three stages of cellular respirations are this acetyl coa production that is from glucose fatty acid and amino acids so this acetyl coa is playing an important role in the respiratory chain of living cell in the stage 2 acetyl coa is being oxidized and it starts the and it starts the reactions for tca cycle yielding the reduced electron carrier now when these electron carriers are being produced when the cycle get complete gets complete uh, complete then it enters to the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation that means what how this chain is getting completed first glucose to pyruvate not only this glucose the source is from glucose to pyruvate from beta acid oxidation also acetyl coa can be formed it can also form from amino acids so whatever may be the source this acetyl coa production is also another important 
factor. Then acetyl CoA is getting oxidized and then it starts the TCA cycle. And when this TCA cycle is completed, then electron transfer chain and oxidative phosphorylation starts and it's, it ends with the this production of ATP and that way it completes the respiratory process. So, the citric acid cycle at a glance, if we see the citric acid cycle involves the conversion of carbohydrate fats and amino acid into the into carbon dioxide and water. In aerobic organism, citric acid cycle makes up the final stage of catabolic catabolism when acetyl CoA is completely oxidized to carbon dioxide. This is also known as this Krebs cycle or TCA cycle as I have already mentioned. It is a central integrated pathway that harvests the chemical energy from the biological fuel in the form of electrons in NADH and FADH2. NADH and FADH2 then transfer the electron via electron transport chain to the final electron acceptor that is oxygen to form the water and here the total respiratory cellular respiration is getting completed. One high energy compound is produced for each cycle of citric acid or TCA. The electron from TCA cycle are made available to the electron transport chain in the form of 3 NADH and 1 FADH2 and ultimately the energy is provided for oxidative phosphorylation. Now, when we will be completing TCA cycle, we will just see that how and how many molecules of NADH and FADH2 are produced along with some byproducts. The citric acid cycle is controlled to all respiratory oxidation, oxidizing acetyl CoA from glucose, lipid, and protein catabolism in aerobic respiration to maximize the energy gain. Now, when we'll be completing this TCA cycle, we'll also see that how enriched a particular cell is when it completes this particular cycle. The cycle is supply, this, this cycle also supplies some precursors for biosynthesis. All enzymes are in the mitochondrial matrix or inner mitochondrial membrane. That means the glycolytic process though takes, takes place in cytoplasmic fluid, but in mitochondria this TCA cycle takes place. Now, it is very important to know the entry of pyruvate into the TCA cycle. Pyruvate is formed in the cytoplasm as a product of glycolysis. For entry to TCA cycle, it has to be converted to acetyl-CoA. Oxidation of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA is catalyzed by the pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme complex which is present in the mitochondria of the cell. Mitochondria consist of inner and outer membrane. Also the matrix of this mitochondria where most of the enzymes are present except the succinate dehydrogenase which is present on the inner membrane of mitochondria. Now, what we have learned that pyruvate is to be converted to acetyl CoA and then acetyl CoA is entering to this mitochondria and inside this mitochondria the pyruvate dehydrogenase 
enzyme is present. Now we have to have this particular uh, that enzyme what we are talking about is the pyruvate dehydrogenase and this particular enzyme is playing a very important role in conversion of pyruvate to acetyl CoA. Now if we see this pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme it is a very very complex enzyme. Now, if we see its structure, we will find that it has got 20 sided polyhedron structure. And if we see actually the core moieties of this pyruvate dehydrogenase, then we can find that the core of this particular enzyme is made up of dihydrolipoyl trans. Acetyl, acetylase. So, this is the enzyme, it is the core enzyme of pyruvate dehydrogenase. Now, here this enzyme has got 60 identical peptide chain. So, you can understand that how complex this core moiety is and its molecular weight is approximately 3.1 million Dalton. So, you can, you can understand that how complex this particular molecule is. Each contain covalently linked lipoic acid. So, this is a huge enzyme and it is obviously allosteric in nature, intracellular and it plays different very significant role as far as the TCA cycle is concerned. Now, here if we see this pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme, it has got the core moieties which is dihydrolipoyl trans, trans acetylase enzyme to which that pyruvate dehydrogenase of 20 such molecules, this another enzyme, pyruvate dehydrogenase has 20 such molecules. Each molecule has the molecular weight of 1,54,000 Dalton is attached to this. This is the core moieties. To this core moieties, that pyruvate dehydrogenase which of 20 such molecules are attached, each are having 1,54,000 Dalton and to this particular moiety another enzyme called dihydrolipoyl dehydrogenase is also attached which is 5 to 6 molecules of 1,10,000 Dalton. So, you can understand that how complex this pyruvate dehydrogenase molecule is. So, this is the core moiety that means we can understand that pyruvate dehydrogenase is present in the mitochondria which mainly constitute which mainly composed of three main enzymes the core being the dihydrolipoyl transacetylase where 60 identical peptide chains are present in these core moieties to which 20 molecules of pyruvate dehydrogenase is also attached to this and 5 to 6 molecules of dihydrolipoyl dehydrogenase enzyme is attached to this. Now, here this is all about this core structure, but besides this to this pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme, 5 to 6 molecules of pyruvate dehydrogenase kinase is also attached of which are of molecular weight of 62,000 Dalton and 7 molecules of pyruvate dehydrogenase phosphatase enzyme is present of molecular, uh, molecular weight of 1 lakh Dalton. So, you can understand that though it has got 3 particular enzymes and 
these three enzymes have direct role in conversion of pyruvate to acetyl CoA, but this last two enzymes pyruvate dehydrogenase kinase and pyruvate dehydrogenase phosphatase, these two enzymes are playing a significant role in the regulatory process of PCA cycle. Now, we will come to this particular complex structure and we will also see the role of these two enzymes as far as the regulation of TCA cycle is concerned. Now, as I have already mentioned that this pyruvic acid can be produced from glycosin to glucose to pyruvate, lactate to pyruvate fatty acid and this pyruvate is amino acid to pyruvate and this pyruvate is getting converted to acetyl CoA. Fatty acid can also give acetyl CoA and this acetyl CoA is entering to the TCA cycle. Now, acetyl CoA if we see its structure, it has got one acetyl group and to which the CoA structure is attached to this. So, this is the structure of acetyl CoA. Now, if we see the conversion of pyruvate to acetyl CoA, then we can find as we have already learned that pyruvate dehydrogenase complex is playing a significant role. So, here we can see that this pyruvate in presence of this NAD and coenzyme A is producing acetyl CoA, NADH and carbon dioxide. Now, as we have learned that one molecule of glucose is giving two molecules of pyruvate, this two molecules of pyruvate when it is getting converted. We are getting two molecules of acetyl CoA, two molecules of NADH, and two molecules of carbon dioxide. Now, this is a, an irreversible process. It means acetyl CoA cannot be converted back to pyruvate. Hence, fat cannot be converted to carbohydrate. Now, if we see the mechanism of action of pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, then we can find that this pyruvate dehydrogenase, if we are symbolizing it as E1, it has, it is playing a very significant role. Dihydrolipoyl transacetylase, if we are considering this as E2 and dihydrolipoyl dehydrogenase, if we are symbolizing as E3, we will find that this main core, what I have already discussed with you that pyruvate dehydrogenase core moieties, then we can find that this E1, E2 and E3 are the three components which are participating in this reaction. Besides that, there, there are five coenzymes which are actively involved in this reaction and those coenzymes are thymine pyrophosphate which is designated as TPP, lipoate, coenzyme A, FAD and NAD. These are the five coenzymes which are involved in conversion of pyruvate to acetyl CoA. Now, if I am showing you this, these are the three moieties E1, E2 and E3. E1 is pyruvate dehydrogenase, E2 is dihydrolipoyl transacetylase and E3 is dihydrolipoyl dehydrogenase. These three enzymes are participating with the five coenzymes and they are converted, converting pyruvate to acetyl CoA. This is the structure of this TPP. This is the structure of lipoic acid. Here this sulfur bonds are there. And when we are coming to this 
first reaction pyruvate dehydrogenase this introduction of pyruvate onto TPP with the enzyme E1 is very significant. Now this TPP contain this TPP is the cofactor and this enzyme when it is um, the, the enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase when it is attached to this TPP it release one molecule of carbon dioxide and hydroxyethyl TPP complex is formed. Now if we see this reaction this TPP is this is the first reaction E1 is the enzyme to which this TPP is attached as the prosthetic group and pyruvate is coming in contact with this complex and one molecule of carbon dioxide is released from this reaction and as a result we are getting alpha hydroxyethylamine phosphate. So, this is the end product. Now, when this first reaction is over, then coming to the second step, what we are getting the, the end product of the first reaction is coming in contact with the second enzyme E2 along with the lipoyl group and here this particular enzyme dihydrolipoyl transacetylase this enzyme is forming it is transferring the, the tra transfer of acetyl group to the sulfur atom is taking, pla taking place with the help of dihydrolipoyl transacetylase enzyme and when this particular reaction is going on then we are getting the end product this is the end product of this reaction and we are getting this uh, the reaction where uh, this product where coenzyme SH is coming in contact with this and when this coenzyme SH is coming it the acetyl group is enzymatically transferred from this lipoyl group of dihydrolipoic acetic acid to the thiol group of coenzyme A and this way the transfer of this, uh, this acetyl group is taking place and this enzyme is participating in this role. When this product is formed then the E3 enzyme which has one FAD as a cofactor is coming and playing a significant role where transfer of hydrogen from FAD to FADH2 is taking place and it forms it forms this particular E3 FAD complex and this E3 FAD complex in presence of uh, this E3 FADH2 when it is just uh, reacting it forms this in, in presence of another cofactor NAD it forms E3 FAD and NADH and H and with the release of acetyl CoA and in this way we are getting this acetyl CoA in this particular reaction. This E2 is then transfer this acetyl to CoA and form acetyl CoA which is the product which leaves from this complex and this acetyl CoA as I have told you this product and this E3 uses the bound coenzyme FAD to oxidize lipoamide back to the disulfide and, gener and generating FADH2. FADH2 is recovered from FAD is recovered from FADH2 by reducing NAD to NADH and NADH is generated as a byproduct in with the completion of the reaction. That means here this coenzyme A is produced and here we have seen 
that NADH is also produced after the completion of this particular cycle. Now, this particular reaction is regulated and if we see the regulation of pyruvate dehydrogenase, then we can find that it is irreversible reaction must tightly be controlled and this control is taken place by three ways. Allosteric inhibition that means it is inhibited by the end product of acetyl-CoA and NADH. So, what is there? That being the allosteric enzyme, the switching on switching off process is there. If the concentration is very high acetyl-CoA and NADH, it switch off the production of acetyl-CoA and NADH. It is also inhibited by ATP. The allosteric activation of AMPO is also there. That means the ratio of ATP and AMP is also playing a significant role as far as this regulation of pyruvate dehydrogenase is there. That means when this ATP concentration is very less, then AMP is boosting, it is the stimulating the reaction and reaction is taking place. And the third way of controlling this is the phosphorylation and dephosphorylation of the E1, that first moiety, that E1 subunit of pyruvate dehydrogenase. Now, what is happening inside this cell? This E1, when it is phosphorylated, this phosphate is getting attached, it becomes inactive and when the with the, in the help of the enzyme phosphatase is taking place then it becomes e1 hydroxyl group is there and it it is active and it converts this process and atp is being utilized and adp is produced so when in the cell adp concentration is a very high then what is happening when ADP concentration is very high, pyruvate is very high, it inhibits the, this particular enzyme and total reaction is getting stopped. And this is the switching on, switching off process which is controlled by this allosteric function of this enzyme. Now, this kinase enzyme is activating here, that is the transfer of phosphate group that kinase mainly transferring the phosphate group of this ATP triphosphate and it becomes diphosphate and this enzyme is phosphorylated and when it is dephosphorylated then it is once again active and in this way the active and inactive forms are, are going on inside the cell depending upon the need and requirement of this particular product in the cell. Now, if we sum up this pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, then we can tell this particular thing what I have already mentioned as this pyruvate dehydrogenase complex consists of three enzymes that is pyruvate dehydrogenase E1, dihydrolipoyl transacetylase E2 and dihydrolipoyl dehydrogenase that is E3. It has got Five cofactor coenzyme ASH, NAD, lipoamide, TPP, and FAD. Coenzyme ASH and NAD participate in the stoichiometrically in the reaction. In the reaction, and the other three cofactors have catalytic function of the particular enzymes concerned. TPP is a cofactor for E1. Lipoamide and coenzyme SH are the cofactor for E2 and FAD and NAD are the cofactor for the submoieties of E3. The pyruvate dehydrogenase reaction is irreversible and overall reaction is this pyruvic acid, coenzyme A, SH and NAD gives rise to acetyl-CoA, carbon dioxide and NADH. This is called as activation of pyruvate in the TCA cycle intermediates are activated by formation of high energy 
thioester bond. One carbon of pyruvate is oxidized to carbon dioxide and one NADH is formed by the end of this reaction. Now, if we see the regulation, then pyruvate dehydrogenase step is irreversible. As a result, animals are not able to synthesize glucose from acetyl-CoA or fat. Pyruvate dehydrogenase is regulated allosterically and by the covalent phosphorylation as we have already discussed this. Pyruvate dehydrogenase is inhibited by acetyl-CoA that enzyme is dihydrolipoyl transacetylase and NADH that is E3 maltase of dihydrolipoyl dehydrogenase being allosteric in nature. Covalent phosphorylation of pyruvate dehydrogenase turns off its activity and dephosphorylation results in the activation. High ATP, NADH and acetyl CoA stimulate the pyruvate dehydrogenase kinase. Insulin, NAD and ADP stimulate pyruvate dehydrogenase phosphatase to act. Now, if we see the TCA cycle and its overview and then if we enter to the actual TCA cycle, then it will be a little bit uh, easier, easy, it will be easy for understanding. I'll, uh, it is a cyclic pathway, all intermediates are derivative of citric acid, a tricarboxylic acid. This is the 8 steps process that means Glycolysis is a 10 steps process, but TCA cycle is a 8 steps process. All except 3 are reversible in nature. Acetyl CoA, the 2 carbon molecule, enters the cycle by condensation with the 4 carbon oxaloacetate, and each of these 2 carbon of acetyl CoA are oxidized and removed the carbon dioxide in two separate reactions, Oxy, uh, oxaloacetate is regenerated and reused in this process. Three molecules of NAD and three molecules of NADH and H plus are produced. One molecule of FAD is required and one molecule of FADH2 is produced. One molecule of GDP is phosphorylated to one molecule of GTP which is otherwise known as substrate level phosphorylation and in, in case of glycolytic process, I have also men mentioned about this substrate level phosphorylation and here also we will see that substrate level phosphoryl phosphorylation reaction. Now, coming to the actual steps. Now, acetyl CoA is formed. Now, acetyl CoA is entered to the mitochondria. In the mitochondria, oxaloacetate is present. Now, inside this mitochondria, this when this condensation reaction is going on in presence of the enzyme citrate synthase, then this synthesis of these two different molecules one is 2 carbon another is 4 carbon is taking place resulting in the formation of citric acid. One molecule of water is needed and coenzyme SH is coming out uh, as a byproduct of this reaction. Now citrate is an intermediate in TCA cycle. After the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex form acetyl-CoA from pyruvate, the 5 cofactor thymine pyrophosphate, TPP, lipo, lipoma, lipoamide, FAD, NAD, coenzyme A, citrate synthase catalyzes the condensation of oxaloacetate with acetyl-CoA to form citrate. Now, here you see acetyl-CoA and here oxaloacetate, you see 1, 2, 3, 4 carbon moieties oxaloacetate. In presence of citrate synthase, it is 
producing some intermediate product called S citril CoA intermediate and after a proton is removed from this CH3 group of acetyl CoA, the negatively charged CH2 forms a bond to the carbonyl carbon of the oxaloacetate and the subsequent loss by the hydrolysis of the coenzyme A drives the reaction forward and it results in the formation of citrate and this is the first step of citric acid cycle. The second step what is that citrate is converted to aconitate and isocitrate. Now, acutitase is the enzyme that catalyzes the stereospecific isomerization reaction of citrate to isocitrate via cis aconitate in the tricarboxylic acid cycle. Now, if we see here, this is the isomerization reaction in which the water is removed first, one molecule of water is removed first followed by the addition of water. It moves the hydroxyl group. Now, this hydroxyl group which is there from one carbon to the another neighboring carbon and it forms the product which is called isocitrate. This is the second step. In the third step of TCA cycle, isocitrate is converted to alpha ketoglutarate and here in this particular reaction what we can see that product is that isocitrate to alpha ketoglutarate and it release one molecule of carbon dioxide when one molecule of isocitrate is utilized it produce one molecule of carbon dioxide. Here you see this isocitrate dehydrogenase enzyme is needed is actively participating in the catalytic activities and here one molecule of NAT is converting converted to NADH that means we can also get one molecule of NADH in this particular reaction that means as a result what we are getting this is that decarboxylation reaction is taking place that oxidative decarboxylation of isocitrate producing alpha ketoglutarate and carbon dioxide is being released in this process while NAD is getting converted to NADH and this is a two step reaction which involves the oxidation of isocitrate a secondary alcohol to oxalosuccinate a ketone followed by the decarboxylation of carboxyl group beta to ketone forming alpha ketoglutarate. So, this is the isocitrate, here isocitrate dehydrogenase NAD to NADH is produced, oxalosuccinate intermediate is there and here one molecule of carbon dioxide is being released and we are getting alpha ketoglutarate. The first of the four oxidation steps in this cycle, the carbon carrying the hydroxyl group is converted to carbonyl group and immediate the immediate product is unstable losing a molecule of carbon dioxide while still bound to the enzyme. And this is the third step of uh, TCA cycle. In the fourth step, you see alpha ketoglutarate is converted to succinyl CoA. Now, this reaction is mainly takes place in three steps. Now, decarboxylation of alpha ketoglutarate, reduction of NAD to NADH, 
and subsequent transfer of coenzyme A which forms the end product of succinyl CoA. Now that means here alpha ketoglutarate here alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase enzyme is here one molecule of NAD is also that means in step 4 that is alpha ketoglutarate to succinyl CoA. Succinyl CoA. And here also we can find that one molecule of carbon dioxide is released and one molecule of NADH is released and coenzyme SH is required to form succinyl CoA. Now, if we see the reaction, then we can find that this is alpha ketoglutarate. This is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 carbon moieties. Here, when one molecule of carbon dioxide is going and coenzyme is coming and getting bound with this particular succinyl and form this succinyl CoA, this, is, this becomes 1, 2, 3, 4 carbon compound. So, this is the reaction. The alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex closely resemble to the large complex that convert pyruvate to acetyl CoA. It catalyzes the oxidation that produce NADH, CO2 and high energy thioester bond to coenzyme A. So, that means thioester bond is also produced with this which is linked with this coenzyme A. In the fifth step of this TCA cycle, succinyl CoA is converted to succinate and coenzyme A is coming out of this process. And here in this process in step 5, this succinyl CoA to succinate here one molecule of GTP is produced and this GTP in, in case of bacteria and plant it is in the form of ATP. Now succinyl CoA synthetase enzyme is releasing that coenzyme A and it forms this succinic acid. Succinyl coenzyme A synthetase that it is a thiokinase enzyme catalyze, catalyzes the formation of succinate and coenzyme A, a 4 carbon metabolite that for and form a coenzyme A. This is the 4 carbon compound and coenzyme A is getting released and this is succinic acid is produced and here one molecule of GTP is uh, is produced and this is otherwise GDP is converted to GTP in the presence of inorganic phosphate. One molecule of water is also needed to carry out this reaction. A phosphate molecule from solution displays the coenzyme A forming a high energy phosphate link succinate and this is also the example of substrate label phosphorylation what I have already mentioned you in case of glycolytic process. And this GTP which is there in the higher in, in, in animal system and it is in the form of ATP in case of bacteria and plant. In the sixth step succinate is converted to fumarate. That means in sixth step, succinate is converted to fumarate. And here we are getting one molecule of FADH2, one FAD molecule. This particular succinate dehydrogenase is the enzyme which is not present in the mitochondrial matrix, but this is a membrane bound enzyme which is 
found in the inner membrane of mitochondria and here one FAD molecule is getting converted to FADH2. Now here if we see the reaction, you see this is the succinate and in presence of FAD it is forming the fumarate. This is the third oxidation step in this cycle where FAD removes two hydrogen from and form the succinate. So here this hydrogen is also produced in this reaction, two molecules of hydrogens are produced in this reaction. Now when fumarate in the next step, that step 7 that fumarate is getting converted to malate and in the presence of enzyme fumarase and here one molecule of oxygen uh, water is needed and it forms the malate. You see the addition of water to the fumarate places the hydroxyl group next to the carbonyl carbon and it forms the malate. And when this malate is converting uh, this uh, taking part and it converted to oxaloacetate the first product of TCA cycle in presence of the enzyme malate dehydrogenase. That means in step 8 that malate is converted to oxaloacetate and here we can get one molecule of NADH and oxaloacetate. So, if we see this reaction, then we can find that you see in presence of malate dehydrogenase in the last four oxidation steps in this cycle, the carbon carrying the hydroxyl group is converted to the carbonyl group regenerating the oxaloacetate needed for the first step of this reaction and this is once again the 4 carbon compound and in this way the cycle completes. Now if we see the total TCA cycle then we can find that you see acetyl CoA is coming and it is, it is uh, coming in contact with this oxaloacetate condensation reactions are going on and it forms the citrate the 6 carbon compound then citrate to isocitrate isocitrate to alpha ketoglutarate alpha, alpha ketoglutarate to succinyl coa followed by succinate fumarate malate and oxaloacetate and in this way the total cycle gets complete completed and when this cycle is getting completed we are calling that yes this cycle is continuing and cellular respiration is going on inside the mitochondria of the cell. Now if we see the summary of this particular reaction then we can find that that introduction of two carbon atom and their loss yielding two NADH and a GTP or ATP equivalent to ATP, partial oxidation of succinate to oxaloacetate, another NADH is produced as well as a reduced FADH2 oxaloacetate is regenerated for the next cycle and if we see the overall reaction then we can write this reactions like this acetyl-CoA and three molecules, molecules of NAD because we can see that this is 1, this is 2 and this is 3. That means 3 molecules of NAD is needed, 1 molecule of FAD, 1 molecule of FAD, 1 molecule of GDP and PI and in presence of 2 molecules of water gives rise to 2 molecules of carbon dioxide, see one molecule and another molecule, this is one carbon dioxide and this is another molecule of carbon dioxide. So it results 2 molecules of carbon dioxide, 3 molecules of NADH, 1 molecule of FADH2, 1 molecule of GTP, 2 H+, 2 H+, and 1 coenzyme A which is produced 
in this one molecule of pyruvate and when one glucose is is uh, producing two molecules of pyruvate then this entire thing is getting double one high energy compound is made four pairs of electrons are made available to the respiratory chain of oxidative phosphorylation these are used to generate most of these ATP which are needed and if we see the ATP from the citric acid cycle we can find that that ATP from citric acid cycle that oxidation of two isocitrate the two molecule of, molecules of NADH is there that means one molecule of NADH is equivalent to three molecules of ATP that means it is six molecule of ATP equivalent. Oxidation of two alpha ketoglutarate is also giving that six molecules of ATP, two direct substrate level phosphorylation is giving two molecules of ATP, oxidation of two succinate is giving two molecules of FADH2 and one molecule of FADH2 is equivalent to two molecules of ATP that means it is four molecules of ATP because two molecules of FADH2 is there and oxidation of two malate is also producing two molecules of NADH and it is giving six molecules of ATP and all together we can if we sum up we are getting 24 molecules of ATP and if we summarize the reaction two molecule of molecules of acetyl CoA gives rise to four molecules of carbon dioxide, two molecules of water and 24 molecules of ATP. And if we see the overall ATP generation in this process starting from glycolysis to TCA cycle, then we can find that as we have already learned that eight molecules of ATP is produced in glycolytic pathway. And we have also seen that when pyruvate dehydrogenase is participating in conversion of pyruvate to acetyl CoA, one that uh, one pyruvate is giving one NADH and two pyruvate is releasing two molecules of NADH equivalent to six molecules of ATP. TCA cycle, in TCA cycle we have already seen that 24 ATP molecules are formed. So, if we overall sum up that from glucose to the completion of TCA cycle, uh, we can find that 38 ATP molecules are formed. Now, as I have already mentioned that it is the regulation of citric acid cycle. Now, pyruvate dehydrogenase is the enzyme citrate synthase is the enzyme, isocitrate dehydrogenase and alpha keto, uh, keto glutarate dehydrogenase are the enzymes which are regulating, which are playing a significant role on the regulation of citric acid. Now, when we are talking about the regulation, we, we can find that the intra mitochondrial NAD NADH ratio high oxygen level results in the increased ratio and low level of le and and low levels a decreased ratio a measure of oxygen availability are playing a major regulatory role in citric acid cycle now coming to this anabolic role of tca cycle we can find that the intermediates of TCS cycle serves as the precursors for biosynthesis of biomolecules. Many amino acids are synthesized starting with transamination of alpha ketoglutarate. Porphyrin and heme are synthesized from succinyl CoA. Oxaloacetate is another alpha keto acid and its transamination leads to aspartate and other amino acid biosynthesis. Oxaloacetate is also the precursor for purine and pyrimidine via aspartate and fatty acid and sterols are also synthesized from citrate and these are the anabolic role of TCA cycle. If we see the anaplurotic 
reactions, we will find that since the TCA cycle intermediates are used for anabolism, their concentration varies according to the need of a particular cell. Reactions that replenish the TCA cycle intermediates are also called as anaplurotic reactions. Oxaloacetate can be considered as the primary substrate for TCA cycle. It is replenished from pyruvate by gluconeogenic enzyme pyruvate carboxylase. Now, pyruvate plus carbon dioxide ATP and water gives rise to oxaloacetate ADP and PI. Pyruvate carboxylase is activated in the presence of acetyl-CoA. Pyruvate can also replenish malate and in this way the anapleuritic reactions are going on in TCA cycle. And I have tried to give you the overview of this catabolic process as I have told you earlier that the reactions are of two types. One is the anabolism, anabolic reactions, another the catabolic reaction. Now we are discussing the respiratory process which is a, catab which is a catabolic reaction and uh, what I am uh, discussing that from glycolytic pathway how TCA cycle it starts and how pyruvate is converted to acetyl-CoA and acetyl-CoA entered to this mitochondria and it completes the cycle and this cycle continues in the living system and this way this TCA cycle is taking place in mitochondria of any cell. So thank you very much students. And in the next class, I will be telling, talking about this, the, the electrons which are produced, which are there, how they are being carried out in this particular reaction to complete the cellular respiration. Thank you very much.